For more on this role reversal, I want to bring in Matt Schlepp, uh, former political director to President George W. Bush, and MSNBC political analyst Jonathan Alter, a columnist with The Daily Beast. Well, Matt, let me start with you. Uh, four years ago, Mitt Romney said top geopolitical foe. He talked about Russia as a, an expansion, having sort of an expansionist mindset. He talked about the trampling of free speech and free press over there. This, in many ways, what's playing out right now in, in terms of the developments with Putin is a moment of vindication, a lot of people think, for that, that view, that assessment of Russia. And yet, the new Republican president-elect says he wants closer ties with Russia. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, I think uh, Vladimir Putin is a thug. I think he's a bully. I think he's a problem. Um, but we got to deal with him. And uh, I don't think anybody wants to go to war with him. Um, but we got to make sure we project strength. And I don't think anybody looks at Donald Trump and sees anything other than the fact that he's going to project strength. In fact, it was the Hillary Clinton campaign that had a throwback ad to the Barry Goldwater Daisy commercial with uh, Barry Goldwater not being trustworthy with nuclear weapons. And we heard that over and over again from the Hillary Clinton campaign that Donald Trump was some kind of an aggressive warmonger. Now they're acting like he's just kind of a little patsy sweetheart. My guess is neither one of those things are true. And I think it's smart to start off your administration trying to use your relationships to forge strategic alliances. But I don't think he'll be deceived by what Val uh, Vladimir Putin is and what he's intending to do. Uh, uh, Jonathan, let me ask you this. The Democrats, I mean, we played Barack Obama four years ago. Uh, Mitt Romney said top geopolitical foe. And the Democratic line, wasn't, oh, they're really number two or number three. The Democratic line was fundamentally talking about Russia as an adversary was this outdated relic of a 1980s Cold War mentality. And the Democrats have changed on this even before the revelations about the hacking. Why did that change come about so been, there have been major events, you know, uh, uh, Putin went into Crimea and then he began threatening uh, Ukraine and there were, you know, real questions as to whether he might go into the Baltic states. Uh, so uh, President Obama went to the Baltic states and drew a, a real line there and said, if you come in here, it's war. Because it did seem like there was a, a revival of the Cold War expansionist ambitions uh, of the former Soviet Union. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this, though. When, when, when Romney made that statement in 2012, Russia had already invaded Georgia. They'd already yeah. shown some expansionist flair. Mm -hmm. There had already the stories yes. about the murdered journalist. Putin had already basically yeah. changed the Constitution to come back for... So those signs were already there, weren't they? Ukraine was a different story because then you're getting into these east-west trigger points. You're getting into what is the role of NATO? What is the role of the Western alliance? The stakes went higher and higher. Meanwhile, the former KGB chief is clamping down harder and harder. But you're right that, that politics sometimes does make strange political reversals, strange, strange bedfellows. I would ask the Republicans, though, you know, are you really comfortable with voting party solidarity with Donald Trump, a candidate who many of the Republicans don't think has the temperament to be president and said so during the campaign. He got the support of no former Republican presidents when he ran. Are you comfortable with a guy who has all of these investments with the Russians? We don't know exactly how many because he hasn't released his taxes. And he's appointing people who have all kinds of business connections with the Russians. Are you comfortable with them making an independent assessment of our national interest vis-a-vis -vis Russia. This is really a question yeah. of where well, one's allegiances are. Are they to business no, or to no, our country? No. Well, let me, Matt, Matt, let me ask you about that. Let me ask you about that, Matt, because you, These you are called... good Americans. Hang on a second, Matt, let me just, let me just ask you. you. You called Putin That's a, a, a good thug American. when I asked you about him. Yes. Romney four years ago, top geopolitical foe. Do you think Donald Trump shares that view, that he's a thug, that they're a foe, or does he want to be friends with them? I, I just want to correct the record there a little bit, which is uh, there are the, these folks are good Americans, right? Uh, I, I didn't uh, say they, they they're weren't. They're not. Yeah. Their their, yeah. Alle their, their allegiance is not questioned. The the question for, before well, the, the Senate will be should he be the Secretary of State? Mm -hmm. And I think that Republicans. Uh, have a role to play, as Democrats do, with all these nominees, and certainly with Mr. Tillerson, to ask the tough questions. Look, we all want to know the answers. It should be a it should be a vigorous process. In the end, I think he gets confirmed. Um, but you know, you have to be able to answer the questions. And as far as a CEO who leaves a company uh, like he is, just like Dick Cheney did with Halliburton, you know, you never, no matter what you divest 
everyone always will associate you with the company where you were the CEO. It's just a fact. And uh, he'll always have to deal with this question of where his allegiance is, and he just needs to be crystal clear, uh, stay very far away from the line, which I'm sure he will do, and do a good job for the American people. And that's, uh, that's but, what's before them. And I think it's great that we're picking outsiders, but it does come with these complications. And, and, and John, I just, I just want to ask you, Jonathan, because I, I want to stay on this point of, of the, the changing politics of this yeah. issue. Because again, this was, I remember this, and I think most people who think back to 2012 remember, this was a major point of emphasis from the Democrats four years ago, that the very idea of thinking of Russia in an adversarial framing was wrong and outdated. Do you look back four years now, four years ago, and say Mitt Romney was actually right, he was ahead of his time? Uh, you know, I think that a more subtle post-Cold War analysis of all of this is, is certainly within bounds. But we're, we're down to very specific questions now, Steve, which Rex Tillerson is going to have to answer. As head of ExxonMobil, he was against sanctions on Russia for their move into Ukraine. Is he still against those sanctions? Uh, if he's not, then he's out of step with what is the policy that's supported by not just President Obama, but the vast majority of Republicans in the Senate. So he, he has a decision to make. Uh, you, you know, it will cost his old company a lot if those, if those sanctions, you know, stay in place and bite. Uh, if he comes out for lifting them, it will look like he is siding with the interests of his old company, where he's worked for his entire career. He has no other experience. He's, he's a talented, smart man, and he has the support of people like, you know, Jim Baker and Bob Gates, which will probably lead to his confirmation. But he's never had any other perspective right. than that of an oil company. Well, and as we say, this uh, will be a, a confirmation fight that is all about the issue of Russia. And certainly a lot to play out between now and when that final vote is taken. Match Lab, Jonathan Alter, though. Thanks.